The legend that could have been Shane McKay in season three of Next Generation. He finally pops up out of nowhere after being a prominent character in Next in Junior High and High. Did the Degrassi writers do him justice or did they do it terribly? This is the story of Shane McKay. The Degrassi writers should be ashamed of themselves. What do we know about Shane McKay? Well, according to the Degrassi Wiki, he is, his name is Shane Andrew McKay. He's a male. His date of birth was 1974, kind of. Blonde hair, blue eyed. His father was Reverend Stephen McKay. Mary was his mother. Carl was his brother, and he also had an unnamed brother. Emma is his daughter, and Spinner is his son in law. Christine Nelson, aka Spike, was his only relationship. He was in Degrassi Junior High before going to Borden High School in grade 9 because of his stuff, and then Degrassi High. He was he was in 40 episodes of Degrassi, 37 Junior High, 1 Degrassi High, and 2 in Next Gen. That makes 40. So basically, yeah, that's what happens at times. So, here's what happens. So, in a famous episode in Season 1 called It's Late, Shane ends up having sex with Spike and getting Spike a, well, Nelson, Spike Nelson pregnant. Spike doesn't know what to do with the baby and all that, but her parents support her and all that. However, Shane is not so fortunate because his father is a minister, an Anglian, Anglian minister, and, you know, his parents are conservative. They basically wanted Shane to go to private school, as Carl had done. And basically, yeah. He actually came to them about the baby, and the McKays were so embarrassed, they, they wanted him to have nothing to do with the baby, believing it could be put up for adoption as soon as it was born. Here's what Shane is feared. They decided to transfer to a private school. However, Shane refused and insisted on being there for Spike when the baby was born. So basically, in season two, they had a discussion, the McKays and the Nelsons, and basically, Shane's dad basically said that, you know, the baby will probably be for adoption, and Shane won't be doing anything. Basically, he says that we'll put Shane in private school, and you don't have to deal with him ever again. Shane is questionable, but basically, he's like, we'll go to a private school, and then you'll have the baby, you'll put it up for adoption, or you'll abort it, and basically, you know, Shane will never be seen again. Jane basically lashes out at his parents, basically saying that the only reason why they want him gone is because, A, they want him to be as good as Carl and put him up to Carl's standards, and B, is that basically the McKays are so embarrassed by the situation that they can't even go out anymore. And Shane basically says that you're only getting rid of me so that mom can go to her brooch things and you won't feel any embarrassment. So Shane says, screw that, I'm going to help this baby, like it or not. And Shane takes responsibility, in a sense. Emma is born in the summer when Shane's off to camp. Shane wanted the new, wanted to see the baby. And all that. So basically, Shane wanted to see the baby, but it was rebuffed. He proved to Spike that he wanted to share the responsibility for Emma when he began paying her child support each week, half of his allowance. But she didn't want him to see the baby. But at Christmas time, Spike's babysitter had to drive off baby Emma with Spike because she had a personal emergency. Spike said that they can hold, everyone can hold Emma. And they reluctantly gave Shane a chance to hold his daughter for the first time, which is great. All of that. I don't know why Spike was always mad at Shane because Shane wanted to step up to the plate and support him uh, and Snake. And Spike, sorry. I just don't get it. Well, of course, Spike having her problems and basically being kicked out by Mr. Lawrence. Caitlin was upset by it. A lot of people were. Even Raj even said something that she should be allowed to do her exams. But basically, the parents of the school would have said that it would have been a bad example and all that. And basically, yeah, this is the 1980s, people. So basically, Shane looked good. Unfortunately, a few months later, he made a terrible mistake. 
we decided to go to a rock concert instead of paying Spike the monthly child support. Basically, Spike was mad at his selfishness. So anyway, Shane's friend Luke got LSD for them to take at the concert, and Shane decided to try it and went home that night. However, the police find a badly injured Shane then following Nate underneath a bridge due to the intake of LSD. They said he either fell off a bridge or jumped off, but nobody knew. Shane was comatose at the hospital for several weeks before regaining consciousness. He actually ended up coming back to Degrassi to attend the end of year dance and has to use a walker and Luke assists him and all that, which was amazing. Luke, of course, is shaking at the fact that, you know, what he did, what, getting Shane LSD and all that was terrible. So anyway, when we look at Luke Matthews, the guy who did that, all that, he had his drug use and provision. He basically provided the drugs that caused Shane's serious injury and left him brain damage. And he was also friends with Luke. Season 3, basically, Luke was trying to help Shane out, but he had a problem. Luke had to lie to the police and tell the officer Shane wasn't using drugs, and now he doesn't know anyone who uses drugs. Not. The police found Luke out of, told Luke out of class to tell him that Shane's under the bridge. And basically, witnesses came through that Shane was on drugs. Luke was nervous. Tim actually ends up asking Luke as Tim how Shane's doing in the hospital. Tim says he's in a coma. Luke hates hospitals. Anyway, Luke ends up that he feels guilty about the fact that he should not have left Shane by himself. Anyway, yeah, Luke seemed to be terrible and all that. So yeah, that's Luke for you. So Shane actually ends up paying a visit to Spike at Degrassi High. Unfortunately, his accident left him developmentally disabled. And he actually has to attend school for special needs kids. Shane did invite Spike to a movie with him. That was in the episode It Creeps. That was kind of cute, the feminist movie. Spike declined. And, and Shane was angry. But Spike says, you know what? She can be his friend still. And basically, Shane says, I like that. Of course, and his parents. So basically, after that digressing I thing, we never hear about Shane ever again. I don't know why. Until next gen, season three, Father Figure. That was when Emma is ready to welcome a new sibling to the world, as Snake and Spike are going to have a kid. Emma, unfortunately, gets ticked off when she's called Emma Simpson instead of Emma Nelson. And that's how she goes by it. But Ms. Hasselakos tells her that the school secretary knew that Emma, what, well, his parents, well, Snake was her stepfather and basically married Spike. But that didn't mean anything. That gets Emma to try to talk to Snake and say, did you have him change my name? Snake denies it. And basically, she wants to find out about her father. What about my father and all that? And Spike angrily tells her nothing. So anyway, Emma grew up not knowing who he was or what happened to him. She's determined to find him. Basically, Spike proved to be a little help. Emma ignores her mom's wishes and tries to look online for Shane McKay thing. She did find a Dr. McKay because she thinks she saw him at a doctor's office. But of course, he was black, so Emma knew that it wasn't him. So anyway, Emma finds out through Snake's alumni stuff that basically he's in Stouffville. He man she manages to finagle Craig into helping her out. And basically, yeah. They go to Stouffville, they find out that Shane is developmentally disabled and living in an assistant living home in Stouffville. So anyway, yeah, so they find Shane at the assistant living residence where his parents placed him some time ago. 
Shane doesn't believe Emma's his daughter, thinking that Emma is a toddler in the picture of his wife's bedside. But they tearfully embrace when he realizes that that is his daughter. Shocked to learn about her father's brain damaged state, Emma returned home and comf well, Emma was running home. Unfortunately, the train to Stouffville left, so now they are stuck in Stouffville. Craig calls Joey. Joey demands to know why those two were in Stouffville, but Emma just said, I'm looking for my dad. And then, you know, Emma was upset about how Shane was placed in a home and that Spike might have had something to do with it. And Craig says, at least you have a dad. True. Very true. So anyway, yeah, so basically she goes at Spike. Spike basically says that I didn't put him there. His parents did. What could you, you? You didn't do anything? I was 14. I didn't have much choice. Snake tries to calm Emma down, but Emma says, you're not my father. However, the next day at school, Spike, Snake decides to tell Emma the truth. He says Spike's side of the situation. She took Emma to visit Shane at the home when she, Emma was three years old. That was when Emma basically thought that the doctor's office seemed familiar. But he had a tantrum. And Spike was actually worried that Shane would inadvertently hurt Emma. Although she was still angry at her mother for lying to her, she understood that Spike was only trying to protect her. And Snake also told Emma the truth about the fact that Shane wanted to be there for the kid, even though a lot of people didn't want him there, especially his parents. But he took an LSD tablet at, the, at a concert that, even, that Snake even attended. And basically, he either jumped off or he fell off a bridge. We don't know. There's no evidence. And, you know, they found him in a comatose. He's in the hospital and then put in a group home, basically by his parents, who finally got rid of him and all that. Emma, of course, tells Snake, why didn't Spike tell me about these things and about my dad? And Snake goes, Spike was waiting for you to get older. And that probably was a bad thing, Emma, but, you know, you should call your mother and all that. In the meantime, Shane somehow manages to get to the Simpson house, mostly because Emma left her her address. And of course, Shane was upset that he was not part of her new life and family. He threw a tantrum that sent Spike into labor. Emma finds out that Shane trashes the house and basically tells Shane off, saying that she's my mom, and if you hurt her, I will never speak to you again. And actually, Shane get, calms down by knitting things. Shane actually knits something of, yeah, Shane knits something for Spike's new edition of that. Emma's half-brother is born happy and healthy, and Emma shared a moment with her father before the nursing home picked him up. And Shane got a new picture of Emma, and bid his daughter goodbye. Basically, he needs to calm down and all that. But Emma picks it up. She took up knitting after fighting anorexia because it calms her down. And she mentioned something to Sean about that. So anyway, Shane ended up being the first of four characters to be in a coma. And of course, the stat, these stats are according to Degrassi Wiki. Shane was the first. Second was Terry McGregor, thanks to Mr. Rick Murray. Third was Adam Torres. I believe, I don't know how he got in the coma. Was that just, I guess that was just before he died. And then Tristan was the fourth because of that bus crash. Shane's the first character in Degrassi history to be mentally and physically disabled. Shane was actually the third character to be portrayed by different actors. Emma was first. Mr. Asset was second, and the fourth was Mrs. Matlin. Now, of course, Shane's main character was Bill Parrott in the Degrassi High Junior High days, and then it ended up being Jonathan Torres, T O R E N S, for the reboot, the next gen. Now, the funny thing is that Jonathan Torres has a connection with Degrassi before his guest appearance in season three. He actually hosted a Degrassi, a two part Degrassi reunion on the show Jonovision. And basically, everyone was happy about that. That feedback got the Degrassi producers to try to make up a new Degrassi that dealt with teenagers and all that. And that came in 2001. A lot of the Degrassi OGs appeared in it. Simpson would end up being the longest serving. I believe Joey 
No, no, Spike would be second, and Joey would be the third longest active. And for Torrance, it actually was good because he won the Gemini for best guest appearance on the show. Shane was the first teen father in Degrassi history, the f and the first guy to get a girl pregnant in Degrassi history. Following Jason, who got Erica, one of the twins, pregnant, but she aborted the child. Joey and Tessa, Joey impregnated Tessa, but the child was aborted. Um, Craig and Manny, had, well, Manny was pregnant thanks to Craig, but the child aborted. JT impregnated Liberty, but she gave the kid up for adoption. Lucas um, impregnated Mia, but the child was kept. All that. Casey and Jenna, well, the Casey impregnated Jenna, child given up for adoption. Dallas impregnated Vanessa, who kept the child. Rocky, Eli and Claire, child miscarried. Miles and Lola, child aborted. And Jonah and an unnamed girl, child kept. Jonah has a kid. Hmm. Shane was the first character to have a reverend. Father is a reverend, or a mother. The other two were Luke and Becky. Shane and Luke were the first characters to do drugs on scene. Not Luke Baker, but like Luke... The drug group. As seen on the show, both of his parents are senior citizens. He had a relationship with, with Spike, but Shane's parents didn't want him to be involved in Emma's life whatsoever. I don't know why. It's kind of pathetic, don't you think? So yeah, that is that. Now comes the big part of that. Well, here's here's my thinking about the whole Shane storyline. It could have been much better. I mean, they could have did updates on him, even in Jurassic High and all that next generation. Because I know that fans would have been like, what about Shane? Where is he and all that? What's Shane doing? Because I think people just didn't understand about me mentally disabled adults and all that. Now this is, of course, the late 90s, early 2000s when this happened, and that, thinking about it, it's just terrible and all that. I mean, still to this day, like 2020, there isn't a lot of justice for these people living in a group home, like mentally or physically disabled adults. That's kind of pathetic in my mind. Technically, I'm partially mentally disabled as someone has autism, but, you know, I live a normal life. I live in a normal house. I have a job. I keep myself busy and all that doing the grassy stuff for you guys. So anyway, yeah. My thinking is that, yeah, they dropped the ball with Shane, especially after Father Figure. Like, we would have loved to see or hear about if Emma keeps in touch with Shane every so often. Jeez. Of course, somebody actually said about a month ago, did a Degrassi post called The Story of Emma's Biological Father Had So Much Potential. And the person said this. So why was it a two-part season premiere only? I would have loved to see him address it again after the episode had aired, but they forgot all about him. I was intrigued by the story. I would rather see the journey of Emma's relationship with Shane. It was a plot hole that they never mentioned again. Yeah, basically, yeah. Pockman, who's a good contributor, said that potentially they've been in for two reasons. One. Emma realized her mom was right not to tell her about Shane, or at least keep it away, her away from him. After seeing how finally he could get in for unpredictable he was. The line of the end went, Emma's calling Snake her dad, clearly indicated that she doesn't consider Shane her father. And two, Shane was not played by Bill Parrott. It was John Vision. There was actually a scheduling conflict with Bear, Bill Parrott. Wow, I didn't know that. This could have been a factor not to focus on Shane. Perhaps they weren't satisfied in Jonathan's portrayal of Shane and all that. Basically, you know, and Pacman said that basically the season three had storylines going on. To Greg, Manny, Ashley, Love Triangle, Marco coming out of the closet, Ellie's cutting herself, Terry and Rick, Snake's cancer, Sean joining the candy bandits, Kayla and Joey even had her. Yeah, it was amazing and all that.
a lot of people actually said that season three embraced junior high and high having a lot of the OGs pop by. Caitlin came back as a regular character in the Joy and Caitlin romance. Emma finds Shane with Heather, Erica, and Liz making cameos in because Liz was the midwife. Wheels came back in one thing and basically was so fun and you got the look about Joey being in a band. Yeah, a lot of people said it was supposed to be a callback to Jurassic High, but, you know, it just doesn't make sense. So, yeah, it was amazing. And all that. I think Shane deserved a whole lot better. That's what I'm going to say about this. Shane deserved a lot. I could make it an unpopular opinion, basically, that Shane should have been part of Degrassi High because it ties in with the fact that the next generation writers basically were not that kind towards the OGs and all that. They played the OGs off for laughs. Caitlin was dumber than she normally is. Spike didn't seem to have a lot of character development. Joey and Caitlin having problems, and Radich basically turned into this crusty principal when we think that he's a decent guy in junior high and high. I don't know. I just don't know about these Degrassi writers. But anyway, season five was worse in the rain perspective. But I kind of like it. Jonathan Torres won a Canadian Oscar for this. He should be proud of himself. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.